Hi, my name is Jason Shohet, and today we're going to do a brief video on skew and kurtosis. Uh, these are attributes of a distribution, uh, as you may recall uh, from your mathematics and, dist and uh, statistics courses. Uh, there are many things in life which follow a, a certain distribution, and, and Frederick Gauss, who is noted up here, he, he came up with this I idea, this, this observation that many things in life follow um, a probability uh, graph that looks like this. So if you think of a histogram of when people are getting married, uh, he noticed that a large number of people, let's say the weighted average is 30 years old when they get married, there's a large number of people between the ages of 25 and 35 who are getting married. And on the tail sides, right on the left, there are very few people getting married before 20. And on the right-hand side, people into their 50s, 60s, and 70s, there, there's fewer and fewer people getting married at those ages. Um, and, and this applies to many, many things in life, uh, certainly to stock portfolios and the returns that you make on a portfolio. So if you think about your own portfolio and let's say Ameritrade, uh, there's a certain probability, let's say instead of this 30, uh, there's a certain problem, uh, you know, the, the weighted average of your returns may be around zero. Like you're, you're not going to make money, you're not going to lose money. On the left-hand side, there's a possibility you're going to lose more and more until there's a very small probability you're going to lose everything. And on the right-hand side, there, there certainly is a probability you could double uh, or even quadruple your, your returns, but that probability kind of tails off here, very low probability of that happening. Um, <clears throat> so that's Frederick Gauss who came up with this observation. Uh, now there are cases I should mention in life where you may find um, that the distribution goes something like, oops, let me, let me switch the, the colors here for a second. Goes something like this, right? Comes up with one bump and then maybe another one, and you know, something. Like, I mean, those are possibilities, but they're they're not normal. They're they're rather abnormal. So that's why we what we call on the left. This is a normal distribution, the top left, and on the right hand side, this is definitely something that's abnormal. Uh, but now going back to the the normal distribution, uh, what people have noticed over time is that that distribution can be somewhat lopsided you can have the, the hump, if you will, the hump of the bell curve go to the left, as you see on the bottom left-hand uh, curve, or it can be kind of to the right, which is the bottom right-hand curve. Um, it can also have a peak, right, a very pointed peak, rather, like you see on the bottom left, or it can kind of have a rounded peak, uh, which is what we see on the right. And uh, those are very important to explain to to management, it's not uh, right. You can't just tell them, well, the mean is this, and uh, therefore that's what we're targeting, and and that's all you need to know. Go go off and make your decisions. I, it's important to to inform senior management at a at a company, or a hospital, whatever it is that whoever it is you're trying to inform, of of the the attributes of this distribution. So the bottom left hand curve, the one with this very pointed peak over here. Uh, that's called laptocurtic or curtotic uh, uh, for short. So if it's curtotic, it means it has a very pointed peak. And because it's so pointed, uh, it's got a very thick tail, right? The tail is very thick over here because the peak rises so high and, and this area, which I shaded under yellow, uh, I is rather small. Therefore, there, there's just a lot under the tail itself. There's a large percentage of the area of the curve that's underneath the extended tails, both to, to the left and the right. Um, then you have what we call a platycurtic curve, or, or low kurtosis. Uh, and this low kurtosis curve means it's very rounded at the top, I meaning there's a, there's a very large probability that, going back to the marriage ages, that people between the ages of 30 and 50 are getting ma going to get married. Uh, we can kind of draw that in here. Look, look how much area is under here, uh, right? A lot of a lot of that. And then the area outside is rather small, right? You have this little area to the left and this little area to the right. Underneath both of those tails, it's rather small. So, uh, if you're a stock manager, um, which would you rather have? Would you rather see a curve 
that is uh, highly kurtotic or, or one that has low kurtosis. Remember that the kurtotic one is the pointed peak and the thicker tail. Well, the answer is uh, you'd rather have one that has uh, the low kurtosis. And the reason why is because this, this pointed peak means that there's a lot of uncertainty in the items that aren't around that peak. Right? There's a, there's a good probability that something's going to happen between here and here. I mean, look at all that area. Or between here and down here. I mean, there's a lot of stuff that's in there. Uh, and that means a lot of uncertainty, you know, around uh, the returns on an, an investment. Whereas the one over here, the far right, the one with the, the low kurtosis, the platycritic one, um, there's, there's very little that's outside of this hump. Now, skew uh, is shows the, the lopsidedness of the curve, whether it's to the left or the right. And the one that is, that is uh, lopsided to the left is actually called positive skew. And the one that is lopsided to the right is negative skew. Back to our example of the average, you know, the weighted average for when people get married, right? We, we said that that was 30, kind of pulling a number out of, out of a hat there. But uh, why would that hump shift to the left? Well, let's say a, a law is passed that uh, people that, are, that get married um, don't have to fight in combat units, right? Now, let's say there's a war going on, and a lot of people don't want to fight in that war. Well, they might rush off to get married as soon as possible, and that could result in the hump uh, getting positively skewed, right? So you have a positively skewed curve uh, because uh, people are rushing off to get married, but then there are just some people that, for whatever reason, are not getting married, and that's that tail that you follow to the right. Uh, you could also have cases where the skew is the other way around. Maybe, for example, uh, people are uh, want to put off getting married Maybe we're going through some economic difficulties, and that's resulting in negative skew. People are, are putting things off, and uh, the hump is therefore moving further to the right. Uh, so it's back to the original uh, question, why is skew and kurtosis important? It's, it's important because when you give uh, a curve like this to senior management, and you explain, you know, this is the mean, and you know, he, you know here's the, the variances, if you will, of, of different points on the curve that are off from the mean, uh, it's important to explain the skew and kurtosis so that they, they have some context for, for what could go wrong, for the things that we don't know. So you could give them a, a high probability, a, a, a certain confidence level that uh, something is going to occur between uh, here and here. But you may say, you know, this is highly kurtotic. So what that means is take it with a grain of salt because there's a lot of things that could go wrong that are not underneath the the peak of the curve um, and and the skew is obviously very important as well to explain a shift so why is something shifting to the left and what does that mean and what decisions might management take uh, because of that shift to the to the left or the right I uh, hope you found this uh, video enjoyable thank you for your time